Hello and welcome to this second video in the Navigation and Map Reading series. My name's Chris Terrell and in this video I'm just going to go through the parts and the features of this kind of compass. And to keep these videos shorter, I'm going to talk about how to use the compass in the following two videos. Now if you're already familiar with this kind of compass, you may want to skip this video and go straight on to the next one. In the description below I'm going to add some links to further information about different kinds of compass. And if you've got any suggestions for good suppliers of compasses in your area or your part of the world, then please let me know via the comments and I'll add those links to the description. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the basic features of the compass. This is a base plate compass and it's a nice, simple, but very useful compass. There are other kinds of added features to make it easier to take accurate bearings and so on, but I'm not going to go into those ones here. So to go through the basic features, we've got the magnetic needle here. If you move the compass around and keep it flat so that the needle can move freely, you'll see that the needle stays in position and it should always be trying to, to point to the Earth's magnetic north. Important thing to be aware of is that the Earth's magnetic north is in a different position to the true north, the actual north pole. And depending where you are in the world, you may need to add quite a significant correction factor if you're taking any bearings or setting up any bearings on the compass to allow for that, for that difference. There is a very small scale you can see on the inside of the housing at the bottom, and that is to do with adding or subtracting that correction factor. Um, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, but it's something we'll look at later on when we go into a bit more detail about some of these finer points. On the bottom of the housing, you've got these parallel lines and you've got this arrow marked here. The arrow is designed, that's designed so that if you're gonna set up a bearing on this, if you want to walk, walk in a certain direction, you just turn that around and so it lines up with the magnetic needle, okay? Or you would turn the compass so that the needle falls within the arrow and then you're lined up on whatever direction you've set on the compass. Again, we'll look at that later in this video in detail. The inside of the housing is filled with a fluid that helps to damp down the movements of the needle to stop it shaking around too much, makes it easier and more accurate to use. But what you have to watch out for is occasionally you'll get bubbles developing inside here if the temperature gets very cold or if you go up to a higher altitude. When you're buying a new compass, make sure there are no bubbles in it because they'll only get bigger if the temperature drops or you go up a hill. And if they get big enough, they can actually interfere with the movement of the needle, which can be at best annoying and at worst can actually make it quite a problem to use the compass properly. So uh, just watch out for that. There are a number of videos on YouTube showing people trying to deal with um, bubbles in these compasses with more or less success. Um, I actually have to do that soon with one of my own old compasses and I'll film that, and if it turns out successful, I'll post it. But just, um, just be aware of that, that that can be a bit of a problem. Round the outside of the housing, you've got these uh, degrees marked from going from north all the way around to 360 degrees, full circle. North is at zero, then you've got east, south and west at 90, 180 and 270, respectively. And all the angles in between, this allows you to take or to set what's called a bearing just to, to set a certain angle relative to magnetic north. This is usually referred to as the bezel, but I will call it the dial at some stages in this video because I think it's just an easier way to remember it, okay? Um, so just be aware of, of that difference in terms. This is called the direction of travel arrow. And when you're using it, that's what you, you keep that pointing away from you because that's the direction you'd want to be going in. These little scales here, are called roamers and they're designed to be used with the common most popular scales of ordnance survey maps here in the British Isles. Um, these make it easy to measure short distances at the different scales on the maps and also they can help you to actually locate items or features more precisely within the, the grid that's overlaid on, on the map. So you've got three scales here, so you've got one to 25,000, one to 50,000 and one to 40,000. But 1 to 25 and 1 to 50,000 are the most popular ones for, for most uh, recreational use. 
Then you've got other features like a little magnifying glass. You may or may not have this, depending on the model that you're getting. And these scales, this is in millimeters, and there's a scale here in inches, just depending on what you need or prefer to measure in. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this introduction of some value. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the compass to set or align your map more accurately with the real world. Then in the video after that, we'll set up the compass so that it acts as a guide to take you in the direction that you want to go. So I'll see you in the next video.